Hey everyone, if your Mac is running slow, I wanna show you exactly what you need to do to help it run a little bit faster and sometimes a lot faster if you follow all the steps. And I will make this step by step. So if you follow this video, just go through the step by step. I laid it out this way. So we're gonna start with the simple stuff that a lot of people overlook then we'll get to the more advanced stuff as we go through the video. And it doesn't really matter what kind of Mac you have. You could have an iMac like I have here, a laptop, Mac mini, really works with any Mac, the process is the same. And before we get started with the steps, do two things for me. Go ahead and restart your Mac. Just come up to the Apple logo here and just press restart and let your computer restart here. So that's the very first step. The second step is, because we are going to delete some stuff, maybe uninstall some applications, do a time machine backup. Now, what a time machine backup is, if you've never done it before, it takes your Mac and it duplicates everything on a hard drive. So this is what I'm talking about, one of these external hard drives that is not part of your computer. That way, if anything goes wrong, which is very unlikely, but I always recommend you do this with all my Mac videos, because then if something went wrong, it's over here. This basically duplicates your computer exactly on an external hard drive. I have a completely different video on how to run Time Machine and the external hard drives that I use, I will put in the description below this video as well. So you could follow along, make sure you do that. If you don't do it, just be careful on the steps that I'm showing you. If you never feel comfortable at any of the steps, just skip that step. I'll show you an automated way at the end of the video that doesn't really include any risk. Okay, let's start here on our Mac. And the first thing I wanna show you is we need to figure out what's causing our Mac to slow down. So step number one is you go up here to the search icon and look up activity monitor, search activity monitor, and then press enter or return here to open this up. And this is basically going to show us what's causing our speed issues. So the speeds are going to be based on our CPU and our memory, these two tabs. The CPU is really the brain of your computer and the memory is the memory of your computer, otherwise known as RAM. So CPU, let's look here, and we could see how much of the CPU percentage of the 100% of the CPU is used by different applications. You could see for some reason a significant amount of my CPU is being used by mail. Pointer Pro is just this pointer app I'm using, so that's taken up, but I can't close this. But what you wanna do is go through this and then once you do see which one is causing the most issues here, you could go ahead and close them down. Now, if you hold down Command and Tab, it will also show you all of them this way. So you could open one of them. Let's say I'll just open VLC here. You see my menu bar on top change, so I could come to VLC here and quit VLC. So open any app this way and close any of them that are taking up a lot of CPU. Then you come to the Memory tab and do the same thing. This is if you have a really slow Mac. Most modern Macs, like I have a 2019 Mac here, are going to handle almost all the apps I have open. But if you have more than 10 open and you have an older Mac, a few years old or even 10 years old, that's gonna be a problem. So you have to limit how many apps you have open and use at the same time. So CPU first, close anything that has a lot of CPU usage by percentage, then the memory tab do the same thing. You could see this one's using about a gig, almost a gig of memory here. So I could close OBS here if I wasn't using it to record the screen, for example. Next, we wanna remove any login items. So if you look up here, you see all these different items that are showing up here, like Pointer Pro, OBS, this one for my microphone, Dropbox, Adobe. So a lot of them I could close down or not let open when I restart my computer. So let me show you how to do that. Let's close this here. Go up here to the Apple logo and we're gonna go to System Preferences. And let me show you on this page, there is something that shows you your login items. So we wanna go right here, Users and Groups. Click this and there's uh, right here, it says Login Items, click this. This is gonna show you everything that when you log in, automatically launch. So if some of them you don't need, like maybe I don't need this here, I could go ahead and press the minus sign and remove this. So when I restart my computer, you won't automatically try to run a bunch of different things that I don't want. This definitely slows down your computer in the background without you realizing it, and they all run up here. Like you can see Parallel Desktop, Dropbox, they're all running up here. So I can make sure I just select them and press the minus and remove them if I don't need them. Now, if there are some things here you don't recognize, this I don't recognize, but it's a system 
thing that I just let run, but a lot of them I recognize because I installed them myself and I no longer need them. I could go ahead and remove them. Number three is cleaning up disk space. Now this is probably the most common thing that I've seen that causes speed issues on Macs. Let's go up to the Apple logo and let's click on about this Mac and we're going to go over to storage here. Now storage is going to show us our internal hard drive that kind of looks like this. It's going to show you how big your hard drive is and what kind of hard drive you have. Now, if you have an SSD drive or a flash storage as it's called here, you're going to have a lot less issues, but that's more with modern Macs and it's kind of an expensive hard drive. So you may not have this and I'm going to show you some things you need to do to fix a hard drive later on, but it's going to show you your entire space here and how much you have available. The white area is what's available. Now, in my case, I have a big hard drive, one terabyte, but if you have a small hard drive, you may be filling up most of it with documents, applications, and this thing called the other folder. Now I have a different video if the other folder looks big in your case. If it's big like mine, there's another video I made completely showing you how to remove the other folder or re reduce the size. Basically 90% or 85% or more of this is filled up. You do need to manage the space on your hard drive, meaning you do have to remove some things. So if I press manage here, it's going to show me exactly what's taking up space. So application, a lot of applications here. So I could select this, see the applications running and then remove the ones I don't use. Maybe I don't use this old version of Photoshop or this old version of After Effects. I could go ahead and remove them. So look through your applications, see what you're not using. And then you could go ahead and delete them here. Again, make sure you've done the time machine backup or be careful what you're deleting. You can't get these back. You could do the same thing with documents with mail, with music, all those will show up here. And then finally you would come to trash and empty the trash can. So I'm going to come down to the trash bin here and I'm going to empty the trash once I remove anything to make sure things are running and I get a better performance out of my hard drive by increasing the available speed. This is also a good way to use these external hard drives. So sometimes I just take any video I have or any photo I have and I put it on these so my internal hard drive doesn't get used up. So here you could see a couple of external hard drives. This one's almost filled up. This one's still almost empty here. I haven't used much, it's a new one. So this is what I use to store footage. Okay, the next one is do a system update. Now, a lot of people are scared to do this because they think if they update to a later system, that it's gonna slow down their, their Mac, but it actually works the other way because Apple does always improve speed with their system updates. So let me show you that here. If you go over to the Apple icon again, you could come to about this Mac and let's go to the overview tab here and click on system updates. So this is the same window we were on, but we're going to go to system updates and we're going to let this check for updates. And if it finds an update, we're going to go ahead and press update now here to get the latest version. Now, just because I'm recording this video, I'm not going to do it here, but this is pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and update to the latest version of whatever Mac OS that is recommending for you to run on your Mac. Again, if you have the time machine backup, you don't have to worry about this causing any issues because if it does for any reason, you could always revert back. Number five is a memory upgrade and it's a little bit more technical than with what you may want to do. But let me just show you while we're on this page, you go to the memory tab and it's going to show you how much memory you have installed. Now I have a ridiculous amount of memory here, 128 gigabytes, but I edit videos and I have a pretty new Mac here that could handle this much memory. But if yours has empty slots here, you may have two slots or four. And if two of these show up as empty, you could actually install more RAM or look it up on Google, see how much RAM your computer can handle. And if you can max it out. On lower end computers, this is a relatively inexpensive upgrade and you could do it yourself, especially on older Macs before 2020. On the iMac, I have plenty of videos on installing a RAM. You could look that up. I'm not going to go to it in this video, but mine is maxed out. So 128 gigabytes, if for some reason that wasn't doing what I needed to, I can't do anything about it because I maxed it up. But if you haven't maxed yours out, it's something to look at. Now, a lot of times I've tried to help people with their computer speed. It turns out the speed is actually related to their internet speed and it is not related to the speed of their Mac. So let me show you exactly how to find that out. You could go to this website, speedtest.net 
and just go ahead and do a quick run of your internet speed and see where your speed is. Now, I have fiber internet, so it's crazy fast here. Yours is probably not gonna be near anywhere near the speed. But if yours is running on the low end, 20 or less here on this end, maybe less than 30, you know there's something wrong with your internet. Now, if you're at work, there's not that much that you could do about it, but at home, you could basically get these things called Wi-Fi extenders and extend the range of your Wi-Fi or get a newer modem or router. So I have different videos about that as well, but I do recommend you run a internet speed here. Make sure your numbers are where they need to be based on the internet connection that you pay for. So in my case, I pay for fiber. So for Wi-Fi fiber, this makes sense. But if you have cable or DSL or slower lines, this is gonna be significantly less. So don't go by these numbers. Just look up what you pay for and then see if these are around what you're getting. Okay, number seven is a little technical here and it is something that is gonna require us to delete things permanently, but they're temporary files that we're gonna delete. So they shouldn't affect anything. But this is again, one of those times where you don't feel comfortable. I'm gonna show you a software that takes care of this for you so you don't have to do it manually. And if you did the time machine backup again, if you lose anything, that's okay because it will be on that hard drive. Let me show you that now. This is clearing out your cache and your cookies stored on your computer. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that exactly. I'll close everything. And what you wanna do is come up to Finder, make sure your Finder window is open. If it's not showing up here, that shows Finder, just come up here and select Finder. So then this menu appears on top. Go to Go, and we wanna to go to Library. If you do not see Library here, hold down Option, and it may appear. Hold down Option, and it may appear. Or press Command, Shift, L. So this Command, Shift, L at the same time, and it should show up this window here. This window is what we want. And here, there are two folders that we want to look into. One is the Caches folder. Find this, if yours is on a different view, just go ahead and change it to List View here so you see the same thing I am. You could double click on it, and here, there's just a bunch of random cache files that are temporary files that may be taking up a lot of space. I'll just show you as an example. If I right click on this and show info, get info right here. I'll show you right here, look at this. 45 gigabytes of information is on this cache file. I could delete all of them. I don't wanna delete this folder because we need a caches folder. We need to double click, go in here and here, you could go ahead and just, look at this is just my bitmoji here, but I could go ahead and press Command Delete to delete it, or I could go up here to edit and select all, and just move them all to the garbage can right here, the trash can. And once it's in the trash can, you could go ahead and right click or control click on the trash can and empty the trash can here. And that's gonna save a lot of space for you and help with the speed of your Mac. Let me show you one more folder here. You could go to go again and then go to library, same way we did before, but instead of looking at caches folder, there's another one here that should be cookies right here. Go ahead and double click this, open this up. Again, don't delete the whole folder, just come into it. And we wanna delete everything that's in here. So I'm gonna select all again. So edit, select all, move everything down here to the trash can. There we go. And now my cookies folder is blank. Now I could go ahead and control click here and empty the trash once again. So do this for your cookies folder and do this for your cache folder. Now let me show you this app I use that does a lot of this and a lot more that's far too advanced I think for regular people to do, but I will give you a list of things. So you could Google any of them if you don't wanna use the app to take care of it. Now this app is called Clean My Mac X. I'll put a link in the description to it. This is my favorite app on the Mac because a lot of the things I showed you, this just takes care of, I just run this every couple of weeks and I don't do any of the things I showed you manually. But it also does things that I have no idea about doing manually because they're far too advanced. I'll show you in a second. What I do is with Clean My Mac X, some of it is free, it will do some things, but I have the paid version because it just saves me a ton of time when I do some of these things manually on other Macs that I've done. But I'll show you here. If you go to System Junk under Cleanup, 
This is going to show you how to optimize your system for removing temporary files and freeing up space. So I usually run a scan here first on their system junks. It does this with mail attachments too. There's usually 5, 10 gigabytes of mail attachments I have on different computers. And I empty the trash can, which you could do manually. You don't have to do that here. But this is what I really like about this. Let me go to speed optimization. Actually, maintenance, I'll show you first. If you go to speed and maintenance, these are all the different advanced things this application could take care of for you. But you could pause the video here and Google these and do them manually if you don't want to get this app or even try the free version of it. You could just do any of these manually. But I always find that it's far too technical to do these things manually. So let's look here. Free up RAM. This will take care of that for me. If your system feels too slow, this is one of the best ways to take care of it. Free up purgeable space. Let's click that. This says 141 gigabytes from my disk is purgeable. <laughs> it seems like a lot. Run maintenance script. Again, I have no idea how to do that. So this takes care of it for me. Flush DNS cache. This takes care of it for me. Speed up mail, build launch services, re-index spotlight. All these things I wouldn't know how to do manually. In fact, it looks like I even never ran this one. So I should run this one here. But some of these other ones I have ran in the past. Then you come to optimization after you run that. And here you could go ahead and view all these items that are recommended for optimization on this page. Or to just make things a lot simpler, go to smart scan and press scan. This will do a cleanup. It will do a protection, which is malware removal, which is another thing that could really slow down your Mac. So I do a malware removal sometimes through that smart scan and it will do the speed optimization and maintenance. So that's all under the smart scan. If you just press scan, this is basically going through those three different processes. Then sometimes I come over here to applications and go to uninstaller. And I don't know why I have World of Warcraft on here, but I would select this and I would delete or uninstall it here because this does a better job of me manually uninstalling the app. It just takes care of everything for me. So I do app uninstalling here, all the speed uh, optimizations here. And sometimes I even look on their space disk scan and then get a good visualization of my entire hard drive and where things are. So this is really nice. Everything is visual. Everything is easy. Look at already found 10 gigabytes here on their cleanup that I could re review here or remove. It's going to check my malware protection and it's going to remove or optimize the speed for me over here. So you don't need that app, obviously. It's just I wanted to show you it. So some of the things that are too advanced or too time consuming to do manually, you could just let this app take care of. I've just installed it. I have the paid version on all my computers, but I think it does have a free version that does take care of some things if you don't want to pay for it. But I have a link to this in the description. So if you want to run it, go for it. But any one of the things that I showed you should significantly improve it. And all the resources are in the description we talked about, including the full list of what we went through. I hope you found this useful. Again, make sure you check out my other Mac videos on removing the other folder if that's taking up a lot of space or doing time machine backup or optimizing your Mac with memory upgrade. I'll link everything in the description below. Looks like my optimization actually just finished up here so I could see that my malware protection was good, but I have three speed optimizations here like free up RAM, flush DNS cache and run maintenance script. So I should go ahead and run those right here. And there you go. It's just taking care of it for me. I don't have to worry about anything. Thanks again for all your time with this video and I really hope you found it useful. Please give it a thumbs up, share it with anyone that may find it useful and I'll see you next time.